Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect. Thank you so very much for tuning into this video. I truly appreciate it. So today I'm going to share with you how to beautifully blur the background, keeping the perspective in mind. You see, it's easy to blur the background whenever you have a horizontal surface like a ground, right? It meets into the horizon. You can apply a gradual blur. It's easy. Or let's say you have a vertical wall at the back. You apply an even blur all throughout. It looks perfect. However, what if you have something complex? Let me show that to you. So here we are in Photoshop and we have our subject and right now we don't have any background in it. So let's say the background was a ground, right? Something like this. How easy it would be to blur it? Very easy. We would have to just apply a gradual blur, something like this. Let's go to the ground and then filter, blur gallery, simple tilt shift, right? And as the distance increased, we increased the blur. And it made sense. The nearer areas will have less blur and as it goes further, it would have more blur, all right? And that's how shallow depth of field works. So it cancel for now. Or what if it had a wall? It's easy as well. All you have to do is to apply some blur throughout. So filter, blur gallery, let's say field blur, right? You apply an equal and even blur throughout and this would work. But what if you have something complex like this? What do you do now? And that is exactly what we're going to tackle today, my friend. Have a look at the original image. So here we have the ground. We also have a vertical wall. We also have one more surface right there. So we have to tackle with all these three. How can we do that? Turns out it's pretty simple and you and I are gonna do this together. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the mystical, magical, mysterious and brilliant world of Photoshop and if you wanna go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do whenever it comes to blurring the background is always extracting the subject. So the best way to accurately select the subject is the pen tool, not the select subject, feature in the later versions of Photoshop, but the pen tool was and always will be the most accurate way to kind of select out objects. Maybe in the future AI things will happen, but right now it's the pen tool. So select the pen tool right in there. The shortcut is always P. So let's select the pen tool and then just zoom in and let's start from right here. Click to create a point and then click and drag to create a curve. Click and drag to create a curve. All right, that's how we will continue. And whenever you want to create a corner, instead of a smooth curve, you would hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it to break the front handle and there you have created a corner, right? You want to create a corner now just for the sake of showing it to you. You would hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it and now it becomes a corner. If you want to know more about the pen tool and how to use it, the A to Z guide is right here. Now I have already drawn the path around the subject so I'm just going to load it up. So I'm going to go to paths. I had already saved it. Now keep in mind, whenever you're creating a path, just rename it and save it. So let's say I was with the pen tool and I was creating a path, something like this. As you're working in the path, just go to the paths tab. Right now you're working on the path that is selected. You just rename it to whatever you want. So I've already created a path for the subject. So let's go ahead and delete this. So I'm going to quickly load that up for you. So I'm going to go to paths, click on that, that loads it up for me. Right now, we are not going to make a selection out of it. Wait for it. First of all, we will make a copy. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. We have a copy and now we can name this subject for organization. Now, we will make a selection out of this path. How can we do that? There are two ways. You can right click on it and choose make selection. You don't want any feather. You can keep it zero and hit OK. The other way is if you have saved the path, you can go to the paths tab, hold the Ctrl or Command, click on the thumbnail of the path. It will also make a selection. Once you have done that, just click on the mask button. Now it's masked out, but you cannot see it separately. If you turn off the background, of course you can see it, but if you want a solid background to kind of see it properly. So let's select the background and then click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. And we're going to choose black. This is just to see it. Hit OK. We can always turn that off later or delete that later. Now, if we zoom in, have a look at this. One of the biggest things to keep in mind while you're working with the pen tool is that it just creates hard edges. When it comes to hair, you have to be careful. You have to do that again. You have to just go in there, make a selection inwards with the pen tool and then bring the hair back with the help of the brushes. So in this case, if you have a look at this photo, it's kind of just impossible to use. Let me just turn off these. It's kind of just impossible to use something like the refine edge tool or the select subject going in there and using all those smart radius and all of that. That's not going to work because the hair is kind of mixing so much with that of the background. It will not properly select the hair. So our best bet is recreating it. So let me turn everything back on. All right. So all we have to do is to select the brush 
and then select one of these hair brushes. So I'm going to go to my hair brush and select one of these and start painting right here. Now I can download all of my personal hair brushes by using the link in the description for free. That's for you. All right, zoom in, make sure the mask is selected, foreground color white. Let's make the brush a little smaller. All right, I'm going to make it a little more smaller and just start painting the hair. See how natural this is? Now, I would highly recommend using a Wacom for this because if you do this with the mouse, it's going to take you a lot of time. There you go. How easy and natural this one looks. Also, there are other hair brushes that you can use, a bigger one, a smaller one, a lighter one, a thinner one, everything you need. And also a single hair brush, which is amazing as well. So if you just zoom in, you just, just draw in squiggly lines. Of course, you need to make the brush a little smaller. Let's go for three pixels. Boom. And just little randomness here and there all right now this area is done as you can see it looks amazing now i've already done this for you for all of the other areas so you don't have to go through all the boring process so let's skip to it so there you have it my friend as you can see i have not worked very hard in it it's pretty shabby here and there it just took me five minutes to kind of do it i didn't pay much attention you know why you can actually spend hours with the hair but I just spent five minutes because it's going to be blurred later because we are creating a shallow depth of field and there's not going to be so much definition in the hair anyway. So don't need to work so hard. Work smart. All right. What else you can do is you can also create some extra layers at the top and then paint some extra hair with the help of the brush tool. All right. So you can take the brush tool and then you can choose the single hair brush or you can also choose multiple hair brush if you want to. And then just if you want to draw some extra hair, you can do that as well. So you can sample this by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click to take a sample and draw some extra hair. Some hair flying in around here and there, right? See, it's looking interesting, isn't it? So I'm going to sample this color and draw hair here and there. You can have fun with this as much as you want. I didn't take much time and drew a couple hair here and there. Have a look. So here is the subject group that I made. If you're getting confused, let me just ungroup it for you. So ungroup. So this was the subject layer that we were dealing with. Let me just name the subject again. And now on top of that, I just painted a couple hair. Have a look. Just this. Just a couple extra here and there. So that's it. Pretty simple. Once you have painted the hair, just group everything into one. Select the subject layer, hold the shift key, select the topmost hair layer, and then control or command G. Now you can just name this group subject. Boom. So the subject is done. It's not an awesome selection with awesome, the most awesome hair, but it's going to be blurred anyway. So who cares? Now it's time for us to move to step number two. Step number two is remove the subject from the background. It's very essential. If you don't remove the subject from the background and you begin to blur it, it will create a ghosting effect. You don't want to have it. Let me show you what I mean by that. It's essential to understand things as well. So let's say we had this background. All right. So let me just copy the background by pressing Ctrl or Command J. We always want to have a backup and momentarily let's turn off this solid color right in there. And then if I start blurring it, just a simple blur filter blur. Let's say we were to apply Gaussian blur and we start blurring the background. Have a look around the subject. It is creating this ghosting effect. Look at that. So it's also blurring the subject around the subject, which can confuse things. So if I blur just a little, have a look at the halo that is created around the subject. This is the subject being blurred. Have a look at the halo of the hair, right? You don't want any of that. And that's why it's essential to remove the subject. So again, I'm going to show that to you again. Turn this off, turn the solid color off, make a copy of the background. And you can actually name this blur. Now, remove the subject from the blur background. Let's turn off the subject momentarily, the subject that we had extracted. Now select the blur layer and then just zoom in. And then with the help of the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool, whatever is your favorite, make a selection of the subject leaving a little gap. Make sure you select none of the subject, not even a single hair. Now you can make this process easier by loading the current selection and expanding it. So right now we already have a selection. If we just open up the subject group right in there, if we hold the control or command and click on the mask, we already have a selection. And now we would go to select modify and then expand and we can expand it by let's try 15 pixels. See, it's already creating such a nice thing. And now we can move on to the lasso tool and kind of improve it wherever it's needed. Hold the shift key to turn it into a plus lasso tool. And then you can start adding to it if you want. So whenever you see something needs to be added, have a look. This area needs to be added. Not even a single hair should be left out. Make sure you add everything.
once we have made the selection all we have to do is to fill it with content aware so let's go to edit and inside of edit we would choose content aware fill if you're using older versions of photoshop just choose fill and make sure content aware is selected inside of the contents drop down and hit ok but in the newer versions just choose content aware fill the dedicated one you can actually leave it at defaults it did a pretty good job and then hit ok if you want you can play with all of these settings but i'm gonna let it go hit ok it did a pretty good job press ctrl or command d to deselect it and now you can turn on the subject now at this point you can blur the background easily you're free to do that now since we were using the brand new content aware fill it had the option of filling out the filled areas on a brand new layer so have a look at this if i turn off the subject you would notice that it filled the blur on a brand new layer we didn't want that just merge both of these layers so select the blur layer and the blur copy by holding the control or command select both of them and then press control or command e to merge them let's name this blur layer or blur background now before we apply blur to it we need to convert this into a smart object so let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters and hit ok now you my friend and i are absolutely ready and geared up for step number three that is blur the background and we will do this by keeping the perspective in mind let's go to filter this is just a regular blur but we will apply it in a certain way that perspective is not ignored filter blur gallery and then tilt shift now it's important that you turn on the subject so that you can see what's happening in there so just make sure that the blur background layer is selected let's go to filter blur gallery tilt shift before we keep on increasing blur let's understand how tilt shift works so let's say we increase the blur to 100 pixels right just keep in mind anything between these two boundaries have a look these two solid boundaries will be at blur zero right zero blur from one of these solid boundary to the dotted boundary the blur will gradually increase from zero here to 100 or whatever number you type in there so from zero it goes on to 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 you get the point and beyond this dotted line everything is at 100 blur value so we need to keep these solid borders around the focal plane or where the camera is focusing in this case it's going to be the subject so where is the subject standing subject might be standing right in here let's guess the height to be right in there so i'm going to keep it right in there okay so here is where the solid line starts and the dotted line ends in probably right there so the blur goes from zero to whatever number we pick later let's not determine that now so that's for the ground but what about the wall right in there? What do we do about it? So for now, let's decrease the blur to zero so that we can see everything clearly. So with the wall, where do you think is the focal plane? So the subject is standing right there. The camera is focusing on the subject. So it should be right about right in there in the wall. So we will create another point. Know that you can create multiple points with tilt shift. And that, my friend, is the secret. So let's go ahead and click to create one more point. But this time, let's rotate the point so as soon as you see the rotation sign hold the shift key and then rotate it it will rotate it in 15 degrees one at a time and then start one of these solid lines right there right about there i guess it would be and slowly and gradually it goes in the dotted line goes until there all right so now we have two perspectives in mind but what about this surface you have to keep that in mind as well so we can create one more point and this time we will make it perpendicular to that of the surface just like this and where's the focal plane let's guess it to be right in there and then we will gradually increase it so we have kept all of these three surfaces in mind now all we have to do is to just increase the blur if you're going to keep it at about 175 that seems like a perfect plan now please keep in mind we can always change the blur values you might ask how well this my friend is a smart object you can always double click on it go to the blur gallery and change the values later so don't worry about the values if you go too excessive or too low with it we can always change that so for now we're going to keep it at 175 now as we add blur we also want one more magical thing and that thing we call it bokeh i don't know how to pronounce it properly but you get the point go to the effects once the effects are open inside of that increase the light bokeh all the way to 100 percent first we will control that later that's the trick bokeh color we don't need any of that 
100% light bokeh is fine. Now these two sliders are the actual magic right in here. So what is the range of the bokeh you want? Where do you want the bokeh to be? So I want all of these to be in the bokeh area. So I think this would be a perfect range. Now, the bokeh at the moment are very brightly and highly overly exposed. To reduce that, you would bring the other white slider close to this. And then you would bring both of these sliders really, really close. And once you bring them absolutely close, they would be amazingly fine. Now you can move it, play with it, see what fits you the best, see what you like the best. I like this the best. And once you have what you like, you can of course decrease the intensity to let go of the overexposed areas. All right. Maybe I'll adjust this a little bit. This looks perfect to me. Now, if you want, you can slightly increase the bokeh color. But for me, it's not of my taste. So I'm going to leave it at that. You can go back to the blur tools and also turn on symmetric distortion if you want to. And once you turn it on and you move it, have a look at the distortion it's creating. So if you're a fan of that, you can create it. Maybe I'll create a slight distortion, just a slight little bit and leave it at that. Now, once you blur the background, there's one more problem that arises. Have a look at this. If we just simply zoom in, you would notice that there's a little bit of noise on the subject. But right now there is no noise on the background because we have blurred it already. So we need to bring the noise back to make it look realistic. Let's zoom out. So to bring the noise back, we would go back to the effects again and then go to the noise and then just choose green or Gaussian, whatever you like. I'm going to choose green, increase the amount not too much noise, just a moderate amount is fine. You can play with the size of the noise if you want to. You can just increase it or decrease it. I'm going to keep it at about this value. You can increase the roughness if you wish to. I'm just going to go with just a little value right there. Just a tiny bit of noise, not too much. You need to match that with that of the subject. Have a look at the noise in the subject right now. What kind of noise is it? It's not too much. So let's just decrease the amount of noise right in there. And there you go. Just a touch of noise, my friend. Now, if you want, you can add an overall blur on top of this just to smooth things up a little bit. So let's go back to the blur tools and then you can also check in field blur just to add an overall blur on top of this. Let's click on field blur and we're not going to add too much of blur. Let's maybe add 10. 10 looks to be a fine number. Hit OK. Once you are satisfied, you can always go back to this and edit this to your heart's content. Let's move on to step number four, which is apply a soft blur to the subject as well. Because have a look, the shallow depth of field that we have created, it's actually pretty shallow. It's very shallow. How can all of the subject be so sharp? It is just not possible, right? Maybe the eyes are sharp. Maybe the ears are not very sharp. It's a little out of focus. Maybe uh, some of the hairs are out of, out of focus. You get the point, what I'm trying to say. So to blur the subject, first of all, let's convert all of the group along with the hair and everything to a smart object. So right click on it and then let's choose convert to smart object. That way you don't have to deal with blurring the masks again, moving it here and there, move, blurring the hair and all of that. Just convert it into a smart object. Now, let's go to filter, blur gallery and this time we would go with field blur. Now field blur also has one thing that I absolutely love. That is adding multiple points. So we can actually zoom in and move this point to the eye because we want the eyes to be in focus and everything in the focal plane of the eye will definitely be in focus. So here are the eyes. Blur is going to be zero in the eyes. All right. Similarly, blur is going to be zero right in here as well. Similarly, let's create a point right there. Blur is going to be zero right in there. But maybe here we're going to add a little bit of blur. How much? Four pixels is fine. All right. Here as well, maybe just about four pixels is fine. You don't have to be absolutely accurate everywhere. Four pixels is fine, All right? Maybe here, zero, because it's in the same focal plane. Maybe here, because the hair is a little back, you'll just create a point, four pixels is fine. You get where I'm going with this. So look at the hand, arm right there. So at this point, we can create a less amount of blur, maybe two. Right in here, we can create a higher amount, maybe five. At this area, we can just create one more point and the arm definitely is going to be a little more blurred because it's a little out. So we can just keep it at six here as well. It's six, same thing. At the bottom, we can add a little more blur. So we can add about eight in here. Just make sure it is six right there. At the back, 
maybe let's keep it at nine right here as well we can keep it a larger amount at about seven see just adding a soft blur adds so much to the subject so let's add six in here how about five five is good so just adding a soft blur to the subject as well overall makes a lot of difference maybe we will add a little more blur hit okay you can always change all of these points later you don't have to worry too much about it now as you can see it's blending much better i think in my opinion the hand is kind of too focused so we can always go back to that and maybe create one more point right in there and blur it out a bit maybe let's go for 12 here let's go for 10 here you can move the points to control the blur as well so hit okay see how it looks yeah it looks fantastic now let's move on to the final step number five and this step is actually optional it is all about brightening up the subject taking the attention more towards the subject and maybe adding some overlays and all of that that is this is optional you don't have to do it this is just enhancing the image even more this is not related to blurring the background because but that is something i would do with this image so let's create a curves adjustment layer at the top and then with the help of the hand right there have a look at the hand and you can choose the sample size three by three average just click on the highlight point of the subject this is the highlight point click and drag it up right right there and now let's choose a shadow point or maybe a midpoint and then bring it back something like this this is interesting and we only want to apply it to the subject not the entire background so here's what we do we click on this button right there create clipping mask button that way it only applies to that of the subject now we don't also want to apply it to the bottom area of the subject we want to apply it gradually so select the mask select the gradient black to white is fine and then let's drag it from bottom to top something like this okay so this is gradual if you want one more curves you can add it as much curve as you want so click on this button to limit it just to the subject and then maybe just take this slider a little bit to the left create something like this all right now you can select the mask press ctrl or command i take the brush and just with the help of a soft round brush let's go to the general brushes soft round brush flow and opacity at 100 just you know my favorite word dab with white right let's make it bigger and just dab in right there there you have it you have the brightness you see that it looks it looks look it's looking amazing now let's go ahead and increase it to about 60 opacity of 60 is fine now one more additional step if you want it you can also add some overlays if you wish to now one of my favorite ways which i personally use to add overlays by uh, is by using a plugin that I really like. It gives me commercially usable textures that I can use in my work without having to worry about licensing it and all of that. It's actually the Infinite Texture Panels AI Visualizer. So I'm going to go to Window, Extensions, AI Visualizer. What it does is that it allows you to browse textures using AI. So if you like a particular texture, it will show you textures similar to that, visually similar to that. So I can go to all of these categories right there, probably light. And inside of light, my friend created this um, the crystal collection all right so I can load it up and then let's say I like this one right if I choose this one everything similar to that will show up if I like this bokeh everything similar to that is going to show up now if I like that one everything similar to that is going to show up I can increase the randomness right there so that more the randomness the more random textures similar to that is going to show up around I actually like the original texture right there if you want a different set you can also reshuffle it so another set of textures similar to this are gonna show up so I actually saved one of my favorites at the top I think it was this one so let's go ahead and load this up so I'm just gonna click on add it's gonna load it up for me at the top it will also add a blend mode to it so this is actually a simple overlay as you can see it loaded it up for me and chose the blend mode screen you can also get some overlays from the internet but i absolutely love this plugin because every texture here is just made for compositing in mind so let's just go ahead and rotate it a little bit probably like this and let's stretch it all right that looks fantastic now i don't want this part of the texture kind of so let's go ahead and click on the mask button right there take the brush black as the foreground color and just paint it away no big issue all right let's decrease the opacity we don't want it to get, gather so much attention let's keep it at about probably 65 and make one more copy of that 
Control or Command J. I want more of it at the bottom. So select the mask of this one and just remove the top. Just keep the bottom. All right, and you can control the opacity of this one as well. Probably a little less. Let's keep it at about 36. There you have it, just a little bit of overlay. Let's have a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here is the after. Such a huge, massive, amazing difference. So here's the final result, my friend. I hope you like it. So that's how you blur the background beautifully using the perspective in mind. All you have to keep in mind is this. Let's go through a quick little recap. First of all, select the subject extract the subject use whatever method you want a lot of the videos are linked up in the description you can check all of them out to select hair select the subject mask it out all of that it's all easy use use the same concepts just extract the subject the second step is remove the subject from the background that you're going to blur so with a copy of the background that you're supposed to blur remove the subject from that if you don't it will create a halo effect step number three is blurring it now to keep the perspective consistent, all you have to do is to add different multiple points for tilt shift. One for the ground, one for the wall, one for another surface. You get the point. Step number four, do not forget also to blur the subject just a little bit on certain areas which are away from the focal plane. You can use field blur to do this by using multiple points because this is such a shallow depth of field you don't want the subject to look like a piece of cardboard which is just so flat step number five is optional you can do anything you want to just enhance the image in this case i just added a few highlights and overlays that's pretty much it i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i would love to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on patreon and helping keep pics perfect free for everybody forever thanks so much for all your support thank you for watching i will see you guys again on my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating